And so many hours thereafter, you start to fast. Okay? What you mean this is nature? We were in the black womb of our mothers. And you couldn't see us, but you knew we were there. Allah Akbar. Yes. So I'm thankful for this religion that Muhammad the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, brought to our attention. And it's naturalness in every way. You know, the, the moon, when you see it, when you can see it, it looks like the letter C. You know, I'm trying to do my fingers like this. We call it crescent, right? When you see a woman and she's pregnant, and you look at her from the side, it's the same C shape. The same shape, alhamdulillah. And we do not eat in the daylight during our fast for these 30 days. We eat at night. Again, following the pattern of nature, in the wounds of our mother, we ate at night. We didn't eat in the daylight. Well, that's all. And in that room of our mothers, we didn't eat Twinkies and Posters, cupcakes, none of that foolishness. <laughs> and when if God comes, the time to break the fast, we don't eat hot dogs and cakes. We drink water and eat two dicks. That's how we start with it. Why? Because we ate natural in mother's womb, and out here we eat natural in Allah's womb. This whole universe, really, is a womb. Just that mother's body, stomach, to, did its best to give birth as a womb to our physical body. The entire universe is a womb to give birth to the human mind. Allah Akbar. Yeah. So I'm trying to show you our religion, how natural it is, you know, and its meaning. And many people, they, they, oh, I don't have to look at nature to get guidance. <clears throat> Where do you think mathematics came from? Mathematics come from somebody looking at nature. Where do you think biology come from? Somebody looked at nature. Engineering, where it come from? Somebody looked at nature, and that person who looked at nature, at God's textbook, they got the message. Then they put it together. They wrote a book. They became the doctor. And you have no idea what they were trying to do. Don't you have a prophet? You can shake your head, yeah. <laughs> the Christians have a prophet. The Jews have a prophet. Muslims have a prophet. Don't you have a book? The Jews have the Torah, the Christians have the Bible, the Muslims have the Quran. So all these people did, these thieves and robbers, they looked at what religion did. And if religion had a prophet, Jesus, Moses, and Muhammad, and they saw how powerful these men were influencing society, they stole from the concept, that concept, and rather than give you a prophet, they will give you a professor. <laughs> rather than give you something in the Quran, they'll give you a textbook that they wrote. So that you will see them and not see Allah. And too many people get hung up on the gifts. My car, my home, my job, my money. And don't give the respect to the giver who is Allah. So we've been distracted by things. I got to pay my rent. I got to do this and other. We're distracted, chasing after material things that Allah wants us to have. Allah wants us to have the car, the suit. Allah wants that. But we turn around and make these things Elah. We make these things gods. I'm not talking about you in here. I'm talking about the society at large. Can you imagine some of those walking around with the milk bottle they had when they was in the arms of their mother? Wouldn't that be ironic? He walking around now, he's 70 years old, still got the drawers, milk, milk bottle. You know what I mean? Let, let's just say the other thing, which was the original breasts, you know? I've seen someone walking around with the original breasts, if they could. <laughs> 
so that Ramadan can come to, to put us back in charge of what Allah wants us to be in charge of. See? <clears throat> the Ramadan, look, I can't, I can't eat in the daytime. I can't drink anything in the daytime. What is that doing? It's a gift. It's a gift. What do you mean it's a gift? Allah is showing me that I am not the physical body. Tack beer. That's what Allah is doing. When I, if I can't eat anything, I still have an existence. And I'm coming into the understanding that I am a cognizant being. That I'm an entity that thinks. Who is, where, where have you heard that before? To nowhere. Nobody can explain that to you except Muhammad and his student, Yahya D. So, man, he, all this time I'm thinking, you know, that this is a hardship. I can't eat anything. Ooh, this is hard. I can't drink anything. This is hard. It's hard not to know that you are a mind. That's the hardest thing. So it says, Allah does not intend for you hardship. He intends for you what? Ease. Is that your Quran? Mm -hmm. That's your Quran. What you mean? I don't understand what it's saying. It's hard for me not to drink water. It's hard for me not to eat food. Listen, it's hard for you to be a drug addict. <laughs> it's hard for you to be an alcoholic. And I can blame all these other negative things. You follow that? So, the, the, the hardship that Allah is bringing you out of is the corruption in the society. That's the hardship. And to come into this is the ease. Because <laughs> I'm no longer an alcoholic. I'm no longer a drug user. I'm not driven to steal money from my mother and my father. Because Allah has given me the power, because I obey him in fasting, he has given me victory over my flesh. Mm. <laughs> so look, you, when you, if you go to college, show me how they steal from our religion. They, they do it all the time. And that's why they're so successful, because they borrow from the Quran. And how do you? Yeah. You know, when you go to college, they say there's, there's the id, id, id. When you go to college, you, some of you know what I'm talking about. There's another, you know, this big, big, polysyllabic concepts in college. The id, the libido, the ego, the super ego, right? But the first one is called what? The id. Spell it idea. You have no idea, you would have no idea you got that from Muhammad the Prophet who established our id. E-I-D, we spell it in, in Arabic. It's phonetic in English, you understand? There's the E, they say, in your nature. And then there's the I of Muhammad the Prophet. Which came first? Was it the E in, in world thinking, or was it the I in Islamic thinking? It was the E. It came first. And then these people came into college, but they didn't understand it. But Muhammad brought the hikmah. He brought the logic, the wisdom, the insight. A man who was not taught by any rabbi, <coughs> any, any shape, any priest, nobody taught him. So, well, where did he get the knowledge from? Go well, ask Moses where he got his knowledge from. <laughs> ask Jesus where he got his knowledge from. They say Jesus was 12 years old, went into the temple and confounded, confounded the rabbis. Who taught Jesus? Hmm. It is Allah who teaches every single one of you. That's the Arabic phrase in the Quran. I think that's, that's sort of the buffer, I think. So, who taught these prophets? Was Allah Himself. Showing you that Allah does not depend on the collegiate secular knowledge. Well, then, how did Prophet Muhammad get his information? He, he, he read the universe. 
everything in this material universe is a word. And the average human being cannot read the words. Like when he was a child in kindergarten, he couldn't read the words there either, could he? Every little kindergarten child, first grade child can read words, but there's words there. You understand what I'm saying? Some people can't read these words. These words are what? Arabic words. So if you can't read English words at some point in your early life, if you can't eat, read Arabic words sometime in your life, then you should understand that human beings cannot read the words that Allah has to place in the whole creation. The tree is a word, the rock is a word, water is a word, air is a word, wind is a word, Venus is a word, the sun is a word, but do you know how to read it? Mm. I'm speaking to not just Muslims, I'm speaking to all human beings. <clears throat> so going back to this id now. So what is this id? This id is your inherent behavior, your inborn, dormant memory of excellence to obey God. That's the it. You said every person, you know, and you'll call the Ibadillah. <clears throat> Ramadan comes, look, it's like the Eid. The Eid, and I do this a lot. If this is my starting point, the day I was born, you know, Mine is October 30th. I go October, November, December, January, February, March, April. You see what I'm doing? And I come back what? I come back to what? My birthday. Same with yours. Okay. So that's what the E is telling you. <clears throat> and you ask the average human being, what's your birthday? March 15th, January 1st. Right? They give you the birthday, right? But they're giving you the birthday of their physical body. When was the day that they were born as a thinker? Hmm. That's your birthday. And nobody knows it. Because of, that's Allah's treasure. Your birthday and your soul belong to him. So he ain't gonna let you know and nobody else. Because he doesn't want anybody taking advantage of you. You see? So now, if this is the case, and it's coming back, what was my condition that I was born under? We made all of the children of Adam most honorable and most dignified. You, if you could see yourself, if they took a video or a film the day you were born, after you come out your mama's womb, and you could see yourself, you would see a perfect servant of God. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Yes, sir. Who are you? You are the obedient, perfected creation of God. Not the one you see in the mirror now. The one you see in the mirror now is the second creation from the culture, from the society and the nation that you're in. That's not you, okay? There's some aspects of yourself you don't like. Maybe I'm a little lazy, maybe I'm a liar, maybe I'm a thief. That's you! You didn't come in the world like that. Mm. You know the 100 attributes you hear of Allah? Huh? Ar-Rahman. Do you know what I'm saying? Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Al-Malik, Al-Qudud, Al-Salam, Al-Muqeen, Al-Muhaymin, Al-Aziz, Al-Jabbar, on and on and on and on. Listen! That is you. You are the 100 attributes. I know you never heard this football. <laughs> Allah is only giving something to you outside that's already where? Inside. So the Ramadan is, is, is coming to bring you back to yourself, your original self. What's your original self? You see this page up here? Do you see anything on it? You see nothing on it. It's clear. It's white. That's you. That is who you are. This page got some words on it. You, you understand what I'm trying to tell you? Maybe some math words, some chemistry words, some algebra words. But this was first. This was the foundation upon which you put words on. Oh, wow. It's truly something to understand. 
When you go to Hodge, don't we men have to put on white top and a white bottom? Yeah, 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 yeah. You can't talk to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why did you put on a white top? Why did you put on a white bottom? Because if you make Hodge and you make Arafat, Muhammad said it will be as though you were born as a brand new baby. Am I right or wrong? No, right, Father. Okay, so it is telling you you're going to wear this white robe now because that's what you had when you came in the world. Hmm. Hmm. Ramadan is just trying to take you back to your real self, to your innocent self, to your pure self, to your sinless self. And if you die during this month with the intention of fasting, even if you're sick and you can't fast, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said you go straight to paradise. First class, non-stop, <laughs> might be your pilot, black <laughs> Excuse me. Y'all, y'all making me emotional. <laughs> Look, if you're going to get emotional, get emotional at this time. Right. <laughs> God is bringing me back to myself. I'm worried about myself. Am I going to die and go to hell? Do I have to do this here? So on and so on. Well, all of us got different things we're worried about. But if you take the fast of Ramadan sincerely, Allah will put an angel here to your ear here. He'll put an angel here this ear. He put two angels in front of your eyes. He put angels in front of your nose and an angel in front of your mouth. And no corruption can get in there. I'm telling you the truth. Oh, I can't see that. Can you see the lungs in your chest? <laughs> oh, you don't believe in unseen. You don't see your lungs, but you believe in it. Can you see your kidneys? No, but you believe in it. So I'm telling you there are entities more real than what you can see with your eyes. Love it. Love it. Love it. Mm -hmm. So this is a religion that stood up whole entire nations. This religion of El Islam straightened them out, stood them up. And Allah is He, God, who is non-material. <laughs> he needs nothing of the material world. Allah, this is who we worship, okay? He is the influence behind everything, Allah. And when we look at the beauty everywhere in the world, you look out here, the beautiful sun, the beautiful sky, and then you look at a beautiful woman and a handsome man, that's a reflection of what's in Allah. Hmm. If you got a beautiful wife, you surely should say, thank you, Allah. If I want to see how beautiful our body is, all I got to do is look at the women he made. <laughs> if I want to see how handsome our body is, all I got to do is look at you brothers. Some of you 800 years old, but you look good. <laughs> Woo, I want to kiss you. <laughs> Especially during Ramadan. Woo, you want to see. Sister, I ain't, I ain't talking about you. I'm talking about these hard dudes. <laughs> they, they're trying to follow the dean and, and, and their goodness and obedience to Allah coming through their skin. Some are looking at them, their faces are shining like they put Vaseline on. <laughs> That's Allah's testimony. That he will prove to you that he's God before you die. Mm -hmm. you die. And Allah tells you in the Quran that you are supposed to get your heaven now and in the hereafter. You're supposed to get your heaven now and in the hereafter. Are you listening? You're supposed to get your heaven now and in the hereafter. And the pioneers, I thank Allah for you. I thank Allah for you who will not walk away from here unless you go to establish another masjid for Allah's pleasure. This is number one. This is where it all started. Right here. And hundreds of recognize it. If you take pride in it, and Allah is the one, he's eternal, he always existed. We say he's a samad. That's one of the attributes for him, not Saman, and it means that he resists anything that tries to influence him. See, a pretty woman might make me do this here. I was influenced by her. You see what I'm saying? A big stack of money make me look twice. Nothing you can give Allah to influence him. You can't make Allah happy. You can't make Allah sad. None of that. You can't kill him. Allah can't be born. I view 
gonna be born, the thing he got to come through is too small. Heck, you could hardly get through. <laughs> Ask some of your mother. My mama said I drove her to a knee on the floor. That's why every chance I did wrong, she beat hell out of me. <laughs> wow, that's what you did to me. <laughs> yeah. So man's destiny is determined by two things, two realities that are law created. Number one is a lost will. So who are you? Mary, John, Rachman, Nasa? Is that who you are? No. You are the will of Allah. Mm. I say that again. You are the will of Allah. He willed you into existence. Mm. And Allah is going to stay with you until you carry out his plan. Mm. Listen, the sun is there, right? Allah is with that son because that son must do a particular thing. So he's going to stay with it until it reaches its, its max. <clears throat> you know the engineer, he got a piece of paper, he, he draws his plan on the blueprint. You know what I'm trying to say? And he will stay with the blueprint. Won't he? I'm talking about the engineer. And then when they go to start to build whatever he's planning, a house or a car or whatever it is, right? He's still there. And he stays there through the blueprint and through the building. Now, listen. <clears throat> there are some people say, well, if you do wrong, Allah is going to punish you. Allah is not going to punish you. He is and he is not. Oh, you're playing with my mind. You're playing games with my mind. No, sir. <laughs> no, sir. You know the builder who builds an elevator? He might have built that elevator 30 years ago. Does he stand there and make sure it go up and down? <laughs> he built it and he walks away. I'm talking about the engineer that made the elevator. Are you listening? Mm -hmm. Then you can get on that elevator, and the elevator will take you up and take you down. Will it not? Mm -hmm. Does he have to stay there mm -hmm. to get it to be done? No. Mm -hmm. So Allah has made you the same way. You have laws in you, and those laws in you, if you follow them, they will raise you up like an elevator. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Allah ain't nowhere around that you can see him. Right. Mm. And if you disrespect the law, it will take you down. <laughs> you may say, well, why, why, why is it going to take me down? <clears throat> if you worship something other than Allah, and you know it's wrong, then Allah will use the thing that you are worshiping to punish you with. Mm. Ain't that fair? Yes, because you can't be reached by anything else. <laughs> you can only be reached by a wine bottle. And you do whatever it says. And we say, don't drink that wine. You say, no, no. So you can, so, so you want to you obey a wine bottle rather than obey us. I ain't talking to you here. This going on the internet. They need to hear this. <laughs> to take the spook out of their mind. You see what I mean? So, so, so what does God do? <clears throat> says, that is what I have in the Islamic religion. Allah says, let there be no force in the religion. So God is not going to force anybody to obey him. Allah made you perfect, and the perfection and the standard of your excellence will make you obey God. Oh, I don't see what you're talking about. That's too hard for me to understand. Listen, if you drink whiskey, and you, and you don't respect people giving you warnings, your liver will come down with cirrhosis. Right. Next thing you know, you're in the hospital. And what is the purpose of this? What is the liver trying to do? Yes, it's punishing you, but it's trying to get you to straighten up. <laughs> it didn't kill you. It's just trying to get your attention. Hey, 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 hey. Stop, stop. Hey, 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 hey. It's talking to you, but we can't hear. Then the man keep on going, he foolishness. Next thing, he had a heart attack. Now he got cirrhosis of the liver, and he got a heart attack. Oh, Allah is punishing me. Allah is not punishing you. It's your heart and your liver correcting you. <laughs> Can you see the, the mercy of God? Mm. That he didn't kill the person? That even the punishment is a, is a help for the person? Oh, <laughs> oh I love this religion. It helps me to see life as it should be seen. It shouldn't be seen as a punishment. It should be seen as a help to try to reach my conscience. 
to bring me back to the state that I was in before I smoked the cigarette and got lung cancer and alcohol before I got cirrhosis of the liver. On and on and on. So here's the month of Ramadan coming back to give me self-control and self-mastery so that I don't have to go down that road of self-induced punishment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the law of mercy. Ar Rahman, Ar the beneficent God. They recording this, and I pray that you record it and make copies and sell it to keep the money in the masjid. And give it to your friends, Christians and non and not Muslims. They need to hear it. Well, where do you get this insight from? The Quran. Wow, uh, well, who else? Muhammad the prophet. Who else? W.D. Muhammad, <laughs> who showed us how to see the son of Prophet Muhammad and translate it the way you're hearing it now. Yes. That was our blessing from Allah. Nobody had brought you information like this from the Quran and the Sunnah where you're hearing it explained like this. Exactly. I'm still W.D. Muhammad, who picked up the Quran and followed the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad and he was rewarded for his obedience. And so, look, it says of the Quran, the Kitab and Maknun says, of this Quran of the Muslims, says, it is a book that is well guarded. It is the only book on, on the planet Earth that is the most read of all the books. Did you hear what I just said to you? The book that is most read is the Quran. And it's read minimum five times a day yeah. by 1.6 billion people. There's a whole bunch of Christians and Jews hiding read the Quran. Mm -hmm. It's the only book that is a miracle. What you mean is a miracle? For you Muslims, you know what I'm talking about. If you fasting Ramadan and you read the Quran, you're going to read in the Quran something this year that you didn't see last year. And you're going to say, who put this in here? <laughs> This is the same Quran, you got your name written on it, it's raggedy as hell, because you done read it. You know, I have a Quran that's real raggedy, and everybody tell me, that's an insult to have a Quran with pages coming off and the covers all raggedy. But I said, insult? I said, that's dignity to the Quran. It's saying that it has, it has been used. <laughs> you understand? When you have a favorite truth, you keep right, you gotta sew it up, don't you? Let it fall off. But why? Because you're using that suit. So the Quran, which you would call raggedy, it ain't raggedy. It, it's testifying that you have been using it. I got one that I won't give none of y'all. It's precious to me. Look like hell, they say. I say, I'm glad it look like hell. Ooh, look how you saying something bad to me. No, if you are wrong and you go in the Quran, you're going to catch hell. Okay? It burns up sin and corruption in the minds of the person. Yeah. I got to keep that problem. Oh, Hell, hell ain't nothing wrong with hell. I tell everybody this all over the country. Hell is a beautiful place. It's the people in it. <laughs> so why you had to have this say this Quran is well guarded? Because that is a miracle. They say Jesus walked on water, Moses split that sea, Elijah went to heaven in a, in a plane and chariot. These are the wonderful sayings of the beautiful teachings of Judaism and Christianity. We don't fight them. But you can't show me those miracles. You can't show me a plane and chariot. You can't show the seas parted. You can't show that today. You can't show the footprint, Jesus walking on the water. <laughs> but you can read the Quran and it's a miracle as long as human beings are on earth. Oh, what you mean it's a miracle? 1,400 years ago, it said that we had sent water down charge. I said 1,400 years ago. This is in the Quran. What does it mean? It means that rain 
It's not just H2O. It's right. not just water. In that water is nitrogen. And the nitrogen is what charges the raindrop. Once that H2O gets nitrogen in it, it wants to rush back down to the earth and find a seed yes. and get in that seed yes. and cause that seed to grow yes. because it's charged yes. with life. Heck, beer. Oh. That's a miracle to prove that Muhammad is the prophet. There was no man around that had that knowledge, scientist or religious. And the Quran is full of miracles again and again and again and again. 1400 years ago, and we made man from clay, from a life germ, sperm. This is chapter 23, I think, uh, 12 to 14. And then we made him into a clot. Then we made him into a lump of flesh. <coughs> then we made him into bones. Then we covered the bones with flesh. And after that, we created another creature. Yes. Those are the steps that you go to medical school like I did. You will read it in a course called embryology. Mm -hmm. And the same stages in the Quran, they got it in that medical textbook. Because it's so fascinating. They said, how did this man know these steps? Mm -hmm. And so they went into the steps and found out that what he said was the truth. <coughs> Allah Oh, 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 oh. The name of that medical book is Keith Moore. I know they're Christian, Christian uh, uh, medical students. Listen, go back and study Keith Moore. I forgot what page it is in the book, and you'll see in there, in that book of embryology, they have the steps of the creation of the human being from the Quran, which is exactly what you learn in medical school. That is a miracle. Yes. And you showed me a professor that had that before Muhammad the Prophet. Mm -hmm. oh, 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 oh. May God exalt him and give him his wonderful place. Well, why do you say so much about Muhammad? Because Muhammad represents all the prophets before him. Yes. And when you give him respect like that, you're giving all the other prophets respect also. So why do you have to say this about your Quran? Because you can't change it. Right. <laughs> they have changed other religious scriptures. I'm not going to say the name because I don't want to hurt no religious community's feelings. But I'm going to tell you, study the history of your own tradition, and you're going to find that they, com they, that they compiled your scripture 400 years after your prophets died. Right. 400 years later. This is what the scholars of your faith tradition will tell you. But you have to be behind closed doors now. They ain't going to tell you in public. <laughs> and then they, they tried to tell me I was on a, 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 a conference. And I found beautiful men. And one of the lecturers, he's a beautiful man, beautiful Christian, beautiful Jewish rabbi. Good hearted people. I was just impressed with them. But he said, our scriptures were formed together 400 years after our prophet died. Both of us agreed. And one of them told me, and your Quran was written 215 years after Prophet Muhammad. I said, oh, no. <laughs> I said, uh, I said, and I'm going to prove this to you, what I'm going to say. I said, do you know the first one to transcribe the Quran was not a Muslim follower of Muhammad? It was a Jew. So if you don't like it, take it up with your own people. <laughs> so they did the first writing. He was a Jew. And I said that the Quran was, com was, was compiled while he was alive. They would write what he said. And he would tell them, this goes in the first chapter, this goes in the second. He would tell them where it would go. Then he passed away. And then Abu, uh, Abu Bakr was urged, I think, by Omar Uthman to, to put, put the, put the it, was, it was in leaves of papers, separate, like this, separate on leaves, on tablets, scattered everywhere. <clears throat> so Abu Bakr said, okay, I'll put it together. And so as they were putting it together, those who had the leaves and the sheets of paper, some of them were putting it in the wrong place. Guess who corrected them? The ones who could not read or write, mm -hmm. but who had memorized the Quran, right. told them, you 
put this end on paper. <laughs> it depends on memorization of the heart. Yeah. And the same way that it started with Prophet Muhammad on no paper, it was on his heart. It is on the hearts of millions and millions of human beings right now. Right. And if you recite the Quran like I do sometimes, with the book open, and I say something wrong, and I'm reading with my eyes, somebody behind me with no book open will correct me. To show you that's the miracle. Allah, Allah. You cannot change the Quran. I tell them all across the country, burn it up. Tell all the pages. They say, man, I'm stuck to the line. Why would you say something like that? I said, I told a man in Florida who first said, burn all of them up. He down with me in Florida. I told my community, let's send that man some charity. <laughs> so they said, no, sir, crazy. I said, wait a minute. I said, we need a modern day miracle. So if you burn up every Quran that you know on the planet Earth, It'll come back if you need it exactly in paper form. Allah <laughs> Akbar. So we need a modern day mirror. That's why I said that. Because there's nothing you can do with the Quran. Other communities right now, they are changing their scriptures. Right as I'm speaking to you. And your Quran says that they have changed the scriptures with their own hands. They have distorted the same with their tongues. But it says, and this book is protected. You hear me? Look at the way you make Salat. The way you make Salat is protected. No one can change how you make Salat. You can't bring a drum in here and a trumpet in here and a choir in here. You can't do that. Everybody else, they didn't, you know, I was raised in the Catholic Church. A lot of my women. And you know how the Catholic Church was like in the graveyard. You know, I was praying when I was little. I went back to the Catholic Church, they got a band in there, people doing backflips. You know what I mean? I'm with it. You know, I started to be the priest. You know, back when, back when, when I was a child. Many churches like that. Those religious people, they're sincere, they don't know. They don't know the way that they're praying in their houses of worship is not the way Jesus prayed. It's not the way Moses prayed. So you got to help them. Do you hear me? All of you are helping them to see how Jesus prayed, how Moses prayed. If they want to see how to pray, come and see how the Muslims pray. And you'll know how the prophets before prayed. Oh, you just making this up. Please go into the early chapters of Genesis right. in your Bible. And it says, Abraham put his face on the ground. Yes, yes. Moses put his face on the ground. Aaron put his face on the ground. And it says in, in the New Testament, Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane put his face on the ground. Yes, so therefore, the Muslim has preserved the way to pray of the prophets. So if you're a Christian and you're a Jew, you want to correct your prayer, follow the community of Muhammad the prophet. The Muslims come into the prayer room and what do we do? We take our shoes off. Because Moses was told when he went into the battle, take your shoes off, you in sacred ground. Jesus said, I, the master, will wash your feet. And you have to do wudu, Muslims. We have to yeah, make that blue sheet, wash our hands, our face, our mouth, our arms, and our feet. Am I right or wrong? Yeah, yeah. I'm showing you how this is the Shaheed community. It is the community that defends and protects what was done with the prophet before. Allah Akbar. Allah. See, nobody has ever brought these points out. You don't need an imam, you are the imam. Look, Allah says in the Quran, He says, <laughs> You know what it means? It's telling the people who are not Muslims. Do you make a livelihood out of seeing that the Quran is false? You don't get what I'm saying. You know these news medias and everything? 
how they are attacking us, yeah. Islamic terrorists, and so on, so on, so forth, right? Mm -hmm. They're getting paid to do that, and no Quran said it was going to happen 1,400 years ago. I just wrote it, I just read it to you. <laughs> Back, chapter 56, verse 82. Go and you read it. <clears throat> yeah, I'm trying to give you these things right quickly. I know you are bored, some of you are bored, because you don't go to you don't go to Jumaan where they educate you. <laughs> you go to Jumaan in blind ritualism. Right. And you're dumb when you leave it when you came in. Right. So why he gonna talk about that? Because Muhammad the prophet didn't do that. After he made Shalat al Fajr, he would sit with the woman like this, and he would ask him, Did anybody have a dream? And if you have a good dream, he said, tell us. Said if you had a bad dream, spit on your left hand side, don't say nothing. <laughs> this is why I said this. I, I give you the hard beat that you think I'm lying on. I don't lie on anybody. I don't need to lie. The truth can take care of itself. You just haven't read it. And the prophet would tell you many times that he had a dream or he had a vision. I'm reminding some of you because you were more Muslim than me. And he said that once he had a dream and he was given a choice between alcohol and milk. You know the story. Some of you saying I see your lips moving. <laughs> and, and then he did what? He, he, he not only told you it was alcohol and milk, but he gave you the tafsir. He didn't give the tafsir. He said the milk is the ummah that would be on the fitrah, on the pattern of nature. See, what you mean? Where do you get milk from? Number one, you get milk from your mama. Ain't that the pattern of nature? And the second place you get milk from is where? From the cow or the goat. So the prophet was guided by Allah to say that here's going to be a community that's going to be on the pattern of nature. Yes. Then the said he said he had a dream and milk was coming out of his fingernail. Y'all know that? Check it in there. And, and the companion said, Ya Rasulullah, what is the meaning of the milk coming out of your fingernails? See, they don't teach you like this. What did he say? El Imma. It is the knowledge. What you mean is the knowledge of milk coming out of the fingernail? And take those who respect Muhammad the Prophet, they'll come into it. The milk coming out of the fingernails is telling you that it is calcium in the milk that makes your bone strong. See? Now how come they don't speak to us like this? The so-called holier than us. See, we ain't the real Muslims. We the counterfeit Muslims. We the ghetto Muslims. We the black mastic Muslims. You see? They need a lot of help. They're suffering from the same racism that Trump is suffering from. Yes. <laughs> Muhammad the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what did he say about this situation? I hope you don't get angry with me. He said, you will get the kind of leader over you that you are yourself. Oh, mm, mm. Who said that? Muhammad. Mm, mm. So since the nation is the army, the leader is the <laughs> The nation is the kind of leader that they are as a whole. Why would God give a gang a priest as a leader? Or an imam as a leader? That's a gang. So the Ramadan has returned. Look, I told you E. Look, see E, look, this is E. Like this. Is. You, you'll start, we're going to have Eid at the end of this, right? End of the year. Then the whole year going to go, and you're going to come back to what? Eid. Eid means return. Return. This is Eid. What are you returning to in Eid? You're returning to the original person that Allah created you. Allah Akbar. Let me read this, and I'm going to sit down. That's first part of Qutbah. I'm coming from Quran, because I'm looking at some of your faces, and you got me. Walakat. <laughs> And you're going to return to us. Hurrah, 
and you're going to return to us bare and alone as we made you for the first time. Are you listening to me? So how did God make me the first time? I did not smoke cigarettes. I didn't drink wine. I didn't commit fornication and adultery. But since I have been born, and in this world, I have gotten away from that innocence. So Allah gives me Ramadan, and if I fast Ramadan, Ramadan, look, it's going to take me, look, age, you see what it's doing? It's going to take me back to no cigarettes. Take me back to no alcohol. Take me back to no fornication. Do you understand Ramadan? Stop looking at it as a blind ritual. And thank Allah that he's bringing me back to myself that he made the first time. I'm coming back to my excellence. And if I do it right, I will be innocent. And Muhammad, he said, if you pray every night and fast, that all of your sins will be forgiven. If all of your sins are forgiven, aren't you the same innocent baby that you first came in the world with? Tax beater. This is what's wrong with the Muslim world. Our imams, our sheikh, our ulama can't explain the concept that's rich in the sunnah and the heart. أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله. You may not believe what I'm about to tell you now, but many Christians and Jews and atheists are following us on the Ramadan fast. They are fasting just like we do because they know this is the perfect fast for human beings. See, in their faith tradition, you can eat a little something. You can drink a little something. You can break the fast if you eat it like this. You can't do that in El Islam. So look what it's doing. I can't drink water, right? Or milk. What is it giving me the power for? It's giving me the power so that I will not become one of the 12.6 million alcoholics. That's the conservative number. If those people were fast like us, the 12.6 million number would start to decrease. Are you getting something out of this? I'm showing you the practicality of your deal. It would decrease the 24.6 million eggs for me. Fast or reduce them. Alone. 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 Now I'm going to say this to you because I'm sorry. It says the fast as it begins is in 30 days and in 10 day section. First 10 day is what? The mercy. Right? So we're in the mercy now. What's the mercy? When you're in your mama's womb, she pregnant with you? That was mercy. You got fed in there, you had clothing, you had shelter. What did you do to get that? Nothing. Look at me, look at me, look up here. She fed you down here, am I right or wrong? Right. She fed you down here. See, look, your mama. Then when you come out of her womb, she's feeding you up here from her breast. Can't you see the mercy that your feeding is getting what? Higher and higher? And then when she finished feeding you here, she starts feeding you here. The highest in the I hope you would look at me. You, should, you need to be looking at me. Or the world will make you a dummy. When you eat food, look at my mouth. This is what you do. Don't you do this way? Am I right or wrong? Right, right, sir. When you are talking, doesn't the mouth go the same way? Yes. So what does it tell you? Allah wants you to know that he created you to have an eating on two levels. That's why your mouth goes in the same condition as if you're eating food and talking. You don't know this. You see this here? Look at my face. You see this? This is your jaw. You have two jaws, but only one of them moves. Right. The one that moves is the bottom jaw. 
and it moves from a low position to what? Right. The upper jaw, which is the highest. You know, law and tennis, the future is not. You can't eat food unless you practice evolution. Wrong high. Mm -hmm. Muhammad, he said, some of them said, I'm sorry. If Dekhala Ramadan put the hat at Walu Samadhi, and that the gates or the doors will be open to heaven. This is the same with Muhammad. For those of you who don't like me, I'm reading Arabic now. Fight Muhammad now. <laughs> well, will it back? At Walu Jahannam and the doors of hell are closed. Who said that? Muhammad, not me. So what is he telling you? You want to see the doors of, of Samaria? You want to see them? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Those are the seven doors to paradise. And if you're a Muslim and you respect the Sunnah of Muhammad the Prophet, Allah will close those doors so the influence of the words of Satan cannot enter you. So why do you make your salat five times a day? I'm talking to the smart ass people who don't think that we have real Islam. Why do you pray five times a day? You tell me if you know so much Islam. I'm going to tell you something. You have prayer five times a day because you're a creature that develops because of your five senses. So you hear, see, taste, smell, feel. Those are the five senses in which you are created. Your body is made with water, steak, potatoes, but your mind is made with words. That's why your hand doesn't eat the Quran, your arm doesn't eat the Quran, it is your mind that eats the Quran by reading his words, and the words form you in the image of the Quran. When you read it, you are created in the image and the likeness of the Quran. So I'm going in now, and when I come back here, y'all please tell the people when I'm coming so they don't have to come here and be punished. <laughs> They're punished by being educated. They're used to being ignorant. Just keep me ignorant, make me feel good, rock me. Please don't educate me. I'm telling you, you're not in the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad. You're not following Prophet Muhammad. He said, seek knowledge from cradle to the grave. Is that the teaching of the Prophet? Yes. <laughs> so as I conclude now, I'm going to have to do this tomorrow. Y'all give me some time. We can get going to a lot of concepts here. Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he changed the world. He civilized the world by conquering the beast in our life, in our society, with education, not the sword. Doesn't America need to hear that quick part? Yes, yes. Jihad, as I conclude, is not for the purpose of conquering lands and overthrowing nations. It was the, for the purpose of liberating the higher self from the animal instinct and to ennoble man's aspiration that is in him. This is the ad. It's a struggle to put forth its effort for education, cultural development, business, and government life. <laughs>